Hi, James Archer here from Sherlingo, and um, I get this question all the time. In fact, I've taught this information before, but uh, just recently uh, we had a class here in this in this room. You can't see the table and chairs, but um, some of the students. I mean, every time we start a class, some of the students are like, "Well, how many words do I have to learn, and how long is that going to take?" And so um, I still have this information on the board from teaching this uh, teaching this idea uh, to the class and so since it's here and it's already written I thought I would reshoot uh, this hopefully short video to teach you uh, how many words you need to learn depending on what goals you want to reach and then how long that might take depending on how long you spend so um, it's uh, so where we start with in this I don't want to take a long time uh, I want this to be a short video so I'll go kind of quick. Um, th number one, the thing that most people tell me all the time is that the reason that they really want to speak Spanish, um, the number one motivator, uh, if, if I poll a lot of people, is for work. To either get a better job or get a different job or something that's really powerful is to be better at their job because a lot of people are working with or helping a lot more Spanish speakers. Um, that could be nurses are seeing more Spanish speakers or in, in um, churches, hospitals, uh, in hotels, and just everywhere. There's more Spanish speakers, 25, 30% of our population, right? Not just the people who work, uh, but also guests and, and clients speak Spanish. So for work, you can really change your potential by speaking how much Spanish. Well, believe it or not, to be really good at a particular job only requires about 250 to 500 words and phrases. And this is very attainable. That's something I'm going to say a lot today. All right, is that, <clears throat> think about this. If you work in a hotel, in hospitality, for example, or in a restaurant, if you have a dialogue of uh, uh, 250 specific words and phrases that you're comfortable with, that can make you really good at that job. So if you're in hospitality, in hotel specifically, it might be words like, what time is checkout? Can you make up my room later? Um, all the little vocabulary, like how do you say pillow and shampoo and whatever. Um, and of course you have to understand you know, the responses, like what time is checkout? Well, it's at 11 a.m., right? Um, but this is so attainable. Why? Well, you can learn 10 words a day. Seriously, that's not a problem. Think about this. Um, Hola, como estas? Me llamo James. Yo soy de Denver, Colorado. All right. Um, hello, how are you? My name is James. I'm from Denver, Colorado. That's 10 words. Well, certainly you can learn that in a day. All right. Well, if you do that for 25 days, that's 250 words. That's one month. The average person picks up the 250 words and phrases, um, along with the little things like good morning, buenos dias, um, in about one to two months. And this doesn't mean you have to do eight hours a day. This can be with like five, 10, 15, 30 minutes a day um, to do that. If, and, and if you can do that a couple times a day, it really sinks in course you want to have a native speaking practice partner that's what we do we bring English and Spanish speakers together to practice that that practicing together with a native speaker that's what makes it sink in and stay in your mind and you remember this stuff okay the next level that you want to get to probably is conversation the next thing that a lot of people tell me is that they would just like to have a 10 or 15 minute conversation with people and you know, hi, again, hi, my name is James, how are you, how are your kids? What is so wonderful about this, the power of this level, is that the average dinner party that you go to, um, when you have a conversation with your friends at a restaurant, you only use a thousand to fifteen hundred individual words and ideas with that. Think about it, okay? Every time you meet your friends, it's going to be Hi, how are you doing? How was it last week? Uh, did you have a good weekend? How are the children? Um, 
those kind of general types of things, you know. Um, oh, you know, I saw a movie on the weekend. Um, I went to the mountains on the weekend. Those kinds of interactions, right? But you don't need this massive native speaker vocabulary to have that kind of 10 or 15 minute conversation. So again, that's very attainable. This 1,000 to 1,500 words, um, 15 to 20 minutes a day practice, you can reach this level in like six to 12 months, depending on how much you practice um, and how much you engage with what you're learning. So again, that's very attainable. Now, the third level of what people desire is, I call it this comfort zone. This, um, can we get to the stage where we know enough words and enough phrases that we're comfortable in pretty much any setting we go to. Uh, last week, I went to a, um, uh, a dinner party. I was at somebody's house, and they invited all of their uh, family and cousins over. And so all of the conversation was in Spanish. But I was comfortable. I had enough vocabulary and enough familiarity with the language to where, even though the whole thing going on around me was in Spanish, including dancing, including music, and everything Colombian, um, I was comfortable being there. No, I didn't know 100%, but I was at you know, the 80, 90, 95 something percent level. And um, regardless of the topic that we were talking about, and so anything I didn't know, they were just happy to help me. That level, when you reach that level, um, you are so comfortable to do whatever you want to do out there. All right. Oh, let me come back to this uh, work and conversation level. Um, an another analogy with work, 250 words, also applies to travel. Um, speaking about Colombia kind of struck me with that. When I was in Colombia, um, it was so nice to be able to go wherever I wanted to go and know that I could get back to my hotel afterwards. Well, if you have a, like a 250 word to 500 word vocabulary for travel, specifically to travel, you can get breakfast and you can check into your hotel and you can ask for your room number and you can catch a taxi and, and know where you're going backwards. So um, this, this, this level that you start with that I would like to encourage you to start with is useful not just for work but also for travel. Okay. Now, when you get to this comfort level and you have your 3,000 3, to 5,000 words, you'll probably reach that in about one to two years, 12 to 24 months, all right? And it's a process. If you can imagine yourself one year from now, one year from today, being able to go to any Spanish-speaking country and being so comfortable that you can um, rent a car. You know, I, uh, my girlfriend and I went to Cancun a while back and we didn't, we went to the beach, obviously, but we didn't stay there, right? We didn't stay in, in Gringo, Mexico, right? We rented a car and drove down to Tulum, and we weren't afraid of stopping in the little towns or having a meal in the little towns or um, asking people for directions or how they were doing because I was at this comfort level of the, the confidence that no matter what happened, I could somehow get myself out of it, right? Okay, um, the, the fourth level that I define is native speaker. Um, native speaker are people who, you know, from birth, uh, or people who have been really, really studying, probably living in a different country, probably get to that native speaker level in about four plus years, right? Native speaker to me is, you know, you know, not just uh, say the major parts of your face, you know, the nose and the mouth and the ears and the eyes, but you know, all those little words, all the, you know, the wrinkles and laugh lines and eyebrows and eyelashes and all those little detail words. Well, that's when you're kind of in that native speaker area. Here, uh, the most common people who are native speakers in two languages are the people who speak one language at home and a different language at school. Think of children. Um, who speak Spanish at home and speak English at school, they can be native speakers without an accent in two languages. Um, I personally will probably never be a native speaker. I'll probably never get to that 75 to 10,000 word, and I'm not worried about that. Um, I'm happy. I travel. I do everything I need to do, and, 
And so that's okay for me. Um, the next thing that people always ask me is like, or, or they say to me is, you know, I want to be fluent. But in my mind, they don't even understand what that means. Um, what is fluency? Well, fluency is not, to me, one of these levels. Fluency isn't the work level, the conversation level, comfort level, or native level. I think a lot of people equate fluency with native speaker, but that's, to me, not what it is. To me, fluent means that you can talk without translating in your head, all right? You can talk without translating in your head first. So if you want to say, um, um, <clears throat> how was your weekend? ¿Cómo fue tu fin de semana? ¿Cómo fue tu fin de semana? All right. How was your weekend? All right. Well, if I want to ask that, do I have to think in advance? How do I say how? ¿Cómo? How do I say was? ¿Fue? How do I say weekend? Fin de semana. All right. ¿Cómo fue tu fin de semana? And then you say it. Right. That's that translate in your head process. And then if somebody responds to you, um, mi, fin de semana, mi fin de semana fue muy bien, all right? My weekend went really well, all right? Do you know what they're saying? Well, in my mind, if you're fluent, you don't have to do that translation. When somebody asks, ¿Cómo fue tu fin de semana? You just know, how was your weekend? And you respond, muy bien, gracias. All right, very well, thank you. That ability to speak the words that you know fluently can happen at any of these levels. So if you know fluently um, the word for, um, I don't know, uh, where is the library? Donde esta la biblioteca, right? Um, which we all learned in high school. Well then, if you don't have to translate those words, if you don't have to translate what time is checkout, or please bring me another pillow, or I need more shampoo, or um, breakfast is at 7 a.m. If you don't have to translate those words in your head before you say them, or, or when you, somebody else says them to you, then in my mind, you are fluent in those 250 words. That's simple, right? Okay. Really what happens is that people reach that um, fluent ability when they get into kind of this conversation comfort level, kind of in between these words, when you're somewhere between a thousand and three thousand words, that's when it's starting to really click and it's starting to be like, oh, I just know those words. Like if somebody says, um, un vaso de agua, I just can picture a glass of water. Vaso is glass, agua is water, un vaso de agua, they, I don't have to think about what that is, I just know what that is. And something amazing happens in here. Um, you may have heard about it before. It's like somebody says, wow, last night for the first time I had a dream and I was speaking Spanish. All right? That's kind of an indicator that you're reaching that fluency level and some words just happen in your target language, in your Spanish language. Okay. Um, oh, timeline. All right. So, the last thing, the next thing that people ask is, uh, um, so, you know, I, I kind of talked about how long does this take, but I made another point uh, in the class was that if you're sitting here at beginner, um, these are the levels that we use for ShareLingo. We only have four levels for ShareLingo. Um, beginner, basic, intermediate, and advanced, all right? I know there's like in the European model, there's like 14 different levels of ability for your target language, but we break it down to four. Beginner is never ever. You don't know the alphabet, A, B, C, D. You don't know the numbers, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Um, you're just, you're a beginner, and we're going to start with zero. But that's not most people. Most people have this little bit of exposure. If you live in the United States, um, where we have more Spanish speakers than Spain, um, you've probably heard, yo quiero Taco Bell, um, uh, una cerveza más, uh, um, burrito, huevos rancheros, you know, huevos rancheros. Um, so you're probably starting somewhere past beginner, uh, but this is where we're going to review the alphabet and the numbers and all those kind of beginning structural things. Basic is kind of where you want to be um, for your work. Basic is 
you're um, kind of in present tense. Everything's happening now. How are you? I am fine. That's present tense. Um, uh, are you going to the movie? Yes, I'm going to the movie. Those types of simple question and answer types of things, those we focus on in the basic level. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. All right. They help you get comfortable there. Right. Now, um, that first example, how was your weekend? Como fue tu fin de semana? That's past tense. We get into the past tense in the intermediate mode, more or less, right? In that, in that thing, well, if you want to tell some, somebody how something was, I went to the beach, uh, fui a la playa, um, that's where we kind of focus in the intermediate mode. And the intermediate mode takes you a long way because after you have the, the present tense and past tense, you can do so many things, right? In future, future is easy. Um, advanced, I'll just define this quickly, that's not most people. That's not where most people um, have a goal of going, uh, really. Advanced is where you start talking about your feelings. So if you read a novel or you see a movie and, want, and you, you don't just want to describe what happened in the movie, but you want to describe how that movie made you feel. Um, that's when we're really getting into advanced uh, uh, kind of range. All right. Okay, so I think that covers everything on this board. Um, I hope that video was not boring or too long. I hope it helps you. Um, again, I am James Archer from the ShareLingo Project. Y nos vemos pronto. We'll see each other soon. Bye.